for our next speaker, uh, we have Yusi from uh, Palladium X. Um, so Yusi is a product manager at Palladium X. She graduated from UPenn's Wharton School of Business and has prior experience in equity research and business development. Uh, and uh, in today's talk, uh, sh uh, she will explore approaches uh, that Palladium X takes with respect to storage provider analysis and capital deployment uh, in the Filecoin network in a data-driven manner. Let's welcome Yusi. Thank you, Sylvan. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Yusi, and I am a PM here at Palladium X. And today, I will be talking about data-driven capital deployment in the Filecoin network. So to introduce the discussion, I wanted to talk a bit about the problem that Palladium X aims to solve. Uh, the Filecoin network, uh, as most people here know, <laughs> it requires a lot of resource dedication. Uh, in, uh, among a lot of stakeholders. So we find that storage providers may have the know-how as well as the hardware to grow, but they may lack sometimes the capital to stake in the network. And on the other side, we have token holders who do not have the hardware, labor, or know-how oftentimes, but they have the capital. And therefore, we observe a mismatch between this know-how and capital. And that's exactly where we believe, as Palladium X, we can come in and provide a solution. Uh, so we really aim to supercharge Web3 data growth through financial innovation as well as efficient allocation. And we want to do so by bridging the know-how and capital gap between the SPs as well as token holders. And we want to do so by the second part of the first uh, sentence, efficient allocation. We want to put more fill uh, to work in order to support network growth. So that being said, I want to go back to the topic of our discussion today. Um, how does that relate to data-driven capital deployment? So we believe due diligence and monitoring are extremely key in understanding uh, SP behavior. So in order to kind of track the due diligence and monitoring, we use both in-house as well as external dashboards. So for the in-house uh, in -house dashboard, we have a due diligence dashboard which is used uh, pre-SP onboarding, and we also have a monitoring dashboard which we use post-SP onboarding. And we also wanted to say we do use starboard analytics <laughs> um, for external dashboards as well. So I also wanted to share some of the metrics that we use when we evaluate SPs based on due diligence as well as monitoring. So the first of which, in order to identify opportunities, we do take a look at capital and size. Uh, so the first kind of aspect that we look at is storage power, which directly reflects the hardware investment volume of the SP. So some of the metrics that we look at include RBP, QAP, and similarly, we also do take a look at the amount of initial pledge, uh, the sector initial pledge, including both the consensus as well as the storage pledge. Uh, also, we believe reflects the SP's commitment to the ecosystem. And the higher initial pledge is something that we do look at when we look at the, um, the initial pledge amount in fill and also the growth of that amount uh, throughout the time. Another area uh, that we look at in order to identify opportunities is rewards history. So full block rewards are not immediately released to SPs. Only 25% will be released immediately, and the remaining 75% will be released linearly within the 180 days. And this uh, release schedule is designed uh, by Filecoin as a strong guarantee for SPs to actually store the data and uh, not uh, continue to store the data before the expiration of the sector. And therefore, we believe this metric really reflects um, how consistently the uh, SP is, uh, is uh, working in, within the ecosystem. So the more locked funds, the better for us. And some of the metrics that we look at here include maximum initial pledge added per day, maximum RB added per day, and also a ratio that is very helpful for us is the ratio of locked funds to initial pledge, the higher the better. In addition to identifying opportunities, we believe it's also important to understand risks. And one aspect that we look at is storage reliability. 
So we believe storage re uh, reliability reflects the SP's reliability in providing consistent storage services. So three metrics that we look at here include the sector ter uh, termination rate, sector recovery rate, and the sector recovery speed. So having this information also helps us identify which SP has been consistently uh, reliable within the network. And after understanding opportunities, evaluating risks, we believe it's also important to continuously monitor. And we do that by looking at capacity growth after deployment. And this, we believe, reflects the SP's post-deployment changes in QA size, as well as how they um, use the capital after the capital is deployed with the SP. So essentially, we look at this aspect in order to confirm whether the deployment has led to SP growth. Uh, basically, how efficient has our allocation been uh, to the SP? So the metric that we look at here includes the QAP change in the last 30 days, as well as the SP annual capacity growth rate. I also want to share uh, some screenshots from our monitoring dashboard. This is using a random SP data. So in the uh, top left-hand side, we are able to see the daily deployment. So we see RB, QAP, also the pledge per day. And then also on the top right-hand side, we have an image showing daily termination. So for this specific SP, we see one termination uh, in, Ju uh, in July. Uh, on the bottom left-hand side, we have the daily rewards, amount of rewards that are vested, that are released, that are mined. And finally, we have the daily gas fees. We're able to kind of understand what uh, part of the gas fees are deployment related uh, and what part of gas fees are uh, more specific to the SP. So I also wanted to take this opportunity to briefly introduce our SP program for Filecoin. Uh, so we do aim to partner with SPs in order to provide capital for their growth on the network. And we believe we offer four competitive advantages. The first of which is we do not require collateral. While we do maintain the control of the owner address, there is no collateral for the SP, which we, uh, we believe lowers the barriers to entry, enabling faster growth for SPs. We also adhere to flexible deals. So unlike traditional revolver style loans, uh, Palladium X offers flexible deal by deal arrangements, which we believe is good for the ever changing market dynamics. We also believe in fair distribution. We partner with SPs to deliver the best possible returns to investors. And we also account for costs in a fair and transparent manner. And finally, I think uh, consistent volumes is, has been very important for SPs, and we really want to make sure that we provide these large and, or these consistent volumes so that we can have a consistent relationship with the SP that's long term. I also want to briefly talk about our onboarding process. We do have a formal process. We start with an SP questionnaire where we ask SPs base, uh, basic information, their needs to better understand the storage provider. And then we go through a KYC and due diligence process, uh, after which we have the operating agreement, then we set up the miner, and we're ready to deploy. And after the deployment, that's when the monitoring dashboard and uh, what we were talking about previously comes back to play. We continuously monitor our deployed capital. And finally, we have profit distribution. And this process is continuous because we operate in a deal-by-deal -deal structure. After profit distribution, we're able to monitor the deals. And if everything looks good, we can have a new deal with the SP. So just briefly, why Palladium X? So we believe we offer two core competitive advantages. First, we do have, we believe in strong relationships with SPs. We want to be on the ground. We want to be talking to SPs to understand uh, their needs. Uh, number two, we also believe we are very dedicated to the Filecoin ecosystem. Our business is focused on Filecoin. We are not involved in uh, other ecosystems, so we believe our team has expertise and former experience with analysis specifically for Filecoin. So we believe both of these things help us maximize wins for SPs as well as capital providers. 
And in terms of future innovation, we look forward to exploring more product innovation within DeFi, as well as opportunities with the FVM. And we really look forward to discussing with everybody here on things that uh, you're researching or working on with respect to these things. And finally, just want to say thank you, obrigado, and looking forward to connecting with everybody. Thank you so much. In the new version of the minor actor that is coming out shortly, there will be a beneficiary address that is targeting, I think, this sort of use case. Will you guys be switching to that or continue using the owner address? Uh, I think internally we'll definitely, oh, we're definitely going to have these conversations. We would love to talk to uh, yourself about this, but uh, we definitely want to be ready for any new changes coming on Falcoin. For what it's worth, I'm not a minor. Just curious. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So I think uh, in the, the, the onboarding diagram, I think you both pointed out that you're um, kind of managing your risk from like a um, off-chain due diligence perspective versus also like, a, not versus, and a, um, a continuous like on-chain monitoring system that's somewhat related to network intelligence and network analytics. So what do you see is the, the breakdown, like which measure is more useful to you in terms of identifying and managing risk with um, uh, storage providers? Absolutely, so I think some of the things that we spoke about before, for example, understanding um, the faults, termination rate, uh, sector recovery rate, I think that helps us look at their past performance and uh, because uh, usually we do ask for um, some of the past IDs that are operated by SPs in which we do this kind of analysis. And I think just some of the other things that we mentioned, such as the locked funds from block rewards and the storage power growth, as well as initial pledge growth, I think those are metrics that we do look at in terms of um, due diligence. And then afterwards, once it's deployed, we make sure that there, there's nothing wrong. And of course, we look at capacity growth. We want to make sure that the capital we've deployed is actually put to use. Uh, so maybe I want to put you in a tough position by asking this question. Uh, if there are two storage providers, are you going to choose between them? One has a stellar KYC, uh, meaning that the entity is very sound, it's probably backed by some like big company, but they have no or like very limited on-chain history. And the other has been like a really a veteran uh, storage provider in this ecosystem, have been consistently providing lots of good service and storage capacity to the network but they are not being backed by like a like a big company or does not have a stellar kyc record um do you have like a preference uh, in terms of which one you might want to go to so i think uh, the kyc portion uh, is required to protect our capital holders so that's something that's required regardless uh, and I think the due diligence is kind of a peace of mind. We need to see that they have uh, had a good track record before we can um, safely assume that they would be able to execute in the future. So I would say both are um, equally important in our, in our view. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.